Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum performance of a team. Before we get started, I just want to quickly mention, if you haven't heard, I recently launched Neat Code Pro. There's a 25% off launch sale going on right now. If you're preparing for coding interviews, I highly recommend checking it out. You can get lifetime access to all current and future courses. For now, I'm focusing on coding interview prep, but in the future, I want to expand to a lot of other things like full stack web development, cybersecurity, maybe even machine learning. If you like my teaching style, I think the courses are gonna be really, really helpful for you. Okay, but back to the problem at hand, and I'm not gonna lie, this one's actually pretty tricky dicky. We're given two integers, n and k, we're also given two integer arrays, which represent the speed and efficiency of a bunch of engineers. We're actually given n engineers, and n is going to be the length of each of these arrays. So the speed of the ith engineer is going to be speed at index i, and the efficiency of the ith engineer is going to be the efficiency at index i. Now we can choose at most k engineers out of the N engineers to form a team. And what we wanna do is try to maximize the performance. The performance is measured as the sum of the engineers' speeds multiplied by the minimum efficiency among all of those engineers. So this is pretty abstract and complicated. Also, the number could be really, really big, so we actually want to return the result modded by this value. So at first you might think this is a dynamic programming problem. It's kind of reminiscent of the zero one knapsack problem because each of these engineers, we can choose to include them or not include them. And we can choose at most K engineers, but the calculation in this case can make things pretty complicated. There's actually an easier and more efficient way to solve this problem, which I'll explain, but first let's walk through the intuition. So these are our arrays. E is for efficiency, S is for speed. So this is an engineer, this is an engineer, et cetera, et cetera. Now the most brute force way to solve this problem for every position, position here, we choose, do we want to include this engineer or not? So one possibility would be to include the engineer. They have an efficiency of five, a speed of two, and one would be to not include them at all. And then we could keep making a decision tree like this, where each path of the decision tree should have at most K engineers. And then among all of the paths, we would calculate the efficiency which we would get by taking the sum of all the speed values for that path and take the minimum of the efficiency values of that path and then multiply those two together. And then among all those values, we would wanna get the maximum of those. Now, obviously this is not gonna be super efficient. The time complexity is gonna be two to the power of N. That's gonna be the size of this decision tree, but there's a better way to do it. And it has to do with how we can go ahead and think about this problem. Remember, we can choose at most K engineers. We don't have to choose exactly K engineers. And remember, when we calculate the efficiency, we're going to take the minimum efficiency among all of the engineers. So let's think about this problem in a different way, and I bet it's gonna make things a lot more simple for you. Let's first try to maximize the efficiency. Among all of these efficiency values, which one is the maximum? It's nine. So I want to calculate what's the maximum performance we could possibly get with an efficiency of nine. Well, the answer is actually very, very simple. So this engineer with an efficiency of nine has a speed of one. So the calculation with just this one engineer would be the minimum of efficiency. So in this case, the minimum would be the single efficiency we have, which is nine. The sum of all the speeds is just going to be one. So we add those two together, we get nine. That's the performance here. Can we get a performance any higher than this if we have a minimum efficiency of nine? The answer is no, because if we add any more engineers to our current set, if we add this guy, we've lowered the efficiency. If we add this guy, we lowered the efficiency. So the maximum performance we can get when we have an efficiency of nine is just this. This is the solution. So we were trying to be greedy and that's the value that we calculated. Now let's try what's the maximum performance we can get when we have an efficiency of the second smallest value. It's possible that with an efficiency of seven, we can get a higher performance. So when we have 
an efficiency of seven, we have just this engineer who has a speed of five. We can't include any of the other engineers that have a smaller efficiency than seven, because at this point, what we're trying to do is calculate the max performance with an efficiency of seven. We're basically going through every efficiency value in descending order from largest to smallest, calculating what's the maximum performance we could get. In this case, the only other engineer we can include is the one that had an efficiency of nine. So here we have two engineers and that's okay because our K value in this case, in this example is equal to two. So we're allowed to have these two engineers. So what's the maximum performance we could get with these two guys? Well, the efficiency is gonna be the minimum of these two, straightforward, it's just seven, that's what we were expecting anyway. And then multiplied by adding their speeds together, one plus five is equal to, so this is six times seven, that's 42. So this is larger than the previous value we had, which was nine. So this is a higher performance. Let's continue the algorithm. By the way, what we realized is since we're going through these efficiencies in descending order, we should actually take this array and sort it in descending order for, with efficiency and sort the speeds corresponding because we know each efficiency is tied to a speed. So we want the relative order of these to be preserved. So now we're gonna continue our algorithm. We already calculated what the max performance would be if we had an efficiency of nine. We also did the same for seven. Now let's do the same for these four. But before we do, I wanna quickly mention when we were at this point, our only choice was to include an engineer that came to the left of it, which was this guy. And we're allowed to choose at most two engineers because that's what our K value is. Is there any reason why we would not want to include a previous engineer? Because in this case, we're guaranteed that all the speed values are gonna be positive. All the efficiency values are gonna be positive. We know that the previous engineer's efficiency won't matter at all because this guy has a smaller efficiency. So this is the value that would be used anyway. But we know that the engineer does have a speed. It would be a positive positive value. So there's never going to be any downside to including an extra engineer if we have the choice to do so. When we were calculating with an efficiency of nine, we did not have a choice to include any other engineers. So now when we get to the next efficiency five, we have this engineer who has a speed of two. Our K value is two. So we can only choose one of these previous engineers. Like I just said, their efficiency makes no difference to us. We have to choose the smallest efficiency anyway, but their speeds matter. We wanna choose the engineer with a higher speed. It turned out to be this guy, so we would get the five. Now the naive way to do this would be with nested for loops. We would just iterate through every previous engineer and get the one with the maximum speed. But there's a better way to do that. We can actually have a heap, a minimum heap of all the previous engineers that we visited and the value we add to the heap is not gonna be their efficiency, of course, it's gonna be their speed. So why am I using a minimum heap though? I thought we wanted the maximum speed. Well, we're going to pop the minimum. We're gonna pop this guy. We're gonna keep track of the engineers with the highest speed in the heap. So then when we do our calculation, we're going to remove this guy and we're gonna see that there's a five already in the heap and we're actually gonna have a running total of what our speed is so far. So originally the speed was one from this guy and then we added a five to it, so it was then six. Then we added a two here, so then it became eight, but then we had too many engineers. We had to remove one, so we removed this guy, so we subtracted one and then we were left with a seven. So that's our speed at this point. And what's the efficiency? Well, that's the easiest part. It's five here because this is the minimum one. So we have five times seven, which is the total speed. So that's 35. So that's not the largest. Previously, we saw a 42. So this is not the largest so far, but let's go now to the next efficiency, which is four. Again, we're gonna pop the one that, that had the minimum speed. So among these two, we're gonna pop this guy so now to calculate the performance, we get four, which is the efficiency, times five plus 10, which is 15. We add those two together, that's 60. And actually that's going to be the result for this 
example. Where we can continue this example, I'll do so very quickly to show you how it runs, but then we're gonna jump into the code. By the way, what's the time complexity of what we're talking about? Well, we had to sort the input array, so that's n log n. Also, we're iterating through this array, which is n, we're pushing and popping from our min heap, but our heap is only gonna be of size k, so that's gonna be time complexity n times log k. But so the overall time complexity is gonna be these two added together. This one is larger, so that's the overall time complexity because we have to sort the input array. So running through the rest of this code, now we're gonna be calculating with an efficiency of three. This is the smallest efficiency we have so far. Among these two, we're gonna pop the one with the lowest speed. So we're gonna pop this guy. So now we're left with these two. We're gonna calculate the performance. It's gonna be three times 10 plus three. That's 13, so this is 39. That's obviously not the solution. None of these are gonna be the solution. Then we would go to the next efficiency. Among these two now, we're gonna pop the one with the smallest speed. It was this guy, so pop him. Now, with an efficiency of two, we're gonna multiply that by the total speed among these two guys. 10 plus eight is 18, that's 36. That's again, not the solution. So the max we found was 60. That's what we would have returned. Now let's code it up. So moving on to the code, the first thing we wanna do, remember, is basically combine the two arrays into a single array of pairs because we wanna sort by efficiency in descending order, but we also want each efficiency to have a corresponding speed. So what we're gonna do, in Python, it's pretty cool. You can actually iterate through two arrays at the same time, so we're gonna zip these two arrays together, efficiency is gonna come first and speed is gonna come second. This allows us to iterate through both of them at the same time. So efficiency is gonna give us a value from the efficiency array, speed is gonna give us a value from the speed array. We're building up our ing array, so we're gonna append to this guy a pair. The first value is gonna be the efficiency, the second value is gonna be the speed of that engineer. After we've built it, we do wanna sort it in descending order. In Python, you can do that pretty easily by setting reverse equal to true. Now we're gonna get to the fun part. We're gonna have two variables which are gonna keep track of our result, which is the max performance we've seen so far, and a second variable which is gonna give us our total speed so far among all the engineers in our min heap. Because remember, the engineers in our min heap are the ones we're considering. Both of these are initially gonna be set to zero. We're gonna create our min heap, which is initially going to be empty. Then we're just going to simply iterate through every single engineer in our array of engineers. We're gonna get their efficiency and their speed. Now, typically what we're gonna to wanna to do is to the total speed, we wanna add the speed of this current engineer. And we also wanna take this engineer and add them to the min heap. So in Python, you can do that like heap q dot heap push to the min heap, this value, which is their speed, because that's what we care about. And to calculate the result, so the current result so far, given this efficiency, remember, we're using this efficiency, so we wanna maximize the result. We're gonna set the result equal to the max of itself and the, uh, and the performance that we're calculating right now, which is gonna be the efficiency multiplied by the total speed so far. So this is pretty much the entire solution. The only thing we didn't cover is what happens when our heap grows too large. We're pushing to this heap, but what if it already had K elements added to it? Well, before we do anything then, what we wanna check is if the length of our min heap is exactly equal to k, then we have to pop from the min heap. So we're gonna say heap q dot heap pop from that min heap, which is gonna pop the speed value. Remember, if we remove an engineer, then we can't consider their speed as a part of the total speed. So we so what we have to say is from the total speed, we're gonna subtract the value that we just popped right now. So that will make sure that we have at most K engineers at a time. So this loop will calculate the max performance given every possible efficiency, and then the maximum will be contained in the result. So we can return that. Don't forget though, that we have to mod it by 10 to the power of nine plus seven. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you enjoy my teaching style, consider checking out neatcode.io. It has a bunch of free resources to help you prepare for coding interviews. You can also get lifetime access to every future course I'm ever gonna create.
Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.